So, my goal as we leave chapter 3 is to have you understand the accounting cycle today. So let's review it and then move on. We're not through adding steps, but we are mostly through the accounting cycle. The first step is the accounting cycle is to analyze and journalize transactions and that is done in the general journal. The second step is to what did you say? Ah, to post, you said, to the general ledger. Once you have posted to the general ledger, you check the accuracy of your posting by preparing a trial balance. This one is called unadjusted because you have not yet made adjusting entries. And when you total it, your debit should equal your credits, proving the equality of your accounts. At the end of the accounting period, whatever it is, you need to review each account on the unadjusted trial balance. Some of the accounts will have wrong balances and you'll need to make adjusting entries. The adjusting entries are made in the general journal and they are posted to the general ledger and you can make a what did you call it? Ah, good. An adjusted trial balance. An adjusted trial balance which proves the equality of your debit, your general ledger after posting. Notice. Journalize, post, trial balance. Journalize, post, trial balance. One journal, one general ledger, and a report showing equality before adjusting entries, and a report showing equality after. At this point, you can issue financial statements that are correct because all accounts have correct balances. First comes the income statement because you need that to make the statement of changes in owner's equity and you need that to make the balance sheet. So that is our accounting cycle to date. The adjusting entries that we learned to make were based on the revenue principle which says record revenue in the period it is earned. It doesn't matter if you received it in advance or haven't received it yet. And record expenses against that revenue according to the matching principle. And the matching principle says match the expenses against the period the revenue was generated or passage of time. It's hard to say rent causes revenue, but it is matched against time. So that ends up with revenue being for a period of time. In our case, we use December. Expenses being for a period of time. In our case, we use December so that we had net income for December based on the accrual basis of accounting. We had adjusting entries that we learned how to make to accomplish this. And they are made right here in the accounting cycle. And there were some adjusting entries caused by prepaid items and there were adjusting entries caused by accrued items. The prepaid items related to expenses and revenue and the accrued items also related to expenses and revenue. And the prepaid items and expenses, we usually set up a supply or a prepaid asset and then moved it into an expense as it was consumed. As far as revenue went, we set up an unearned revenue and moved it into revenue when it was earned. Income statement and balance sheet both affected on accrued items. We set up an expense and moved it into a payable, which we paid in a subsequent period. And then a revenue, we put it into a revenue account and it will be paid in a subsequent period. Accrued items create 
uh, not paid, how about received? Accounts receivable. A crude item set up a payable or a receivable. Prepaid's fix, what's already been set up. Prepaid, cash happens first. And recognition on the income statement. Recognition, there's an abbreviation on the income statement, happens later. On the crude items, recognition on the income statement happens first, and cash happens later. That's it. End of chapter three. You can skip the word sheet. It's not used very often. Hope this helps. Let's move on to the last development of the last part of the accounting cycle in chapter 4. Talk to you soon.